Chapter four is all about rational expressions, um, rational functions, and rational functions are functions that have x's in the denominator. Um, so they're written as a fraction, and there are x's in the denominator. Um, the first type that we're going to look at are inverse variations, because inverse variations are the most simple rational functions there are. So some definitions that you should have. Um, first of all, inverse variation is a kind of variation when one product increases, the other one decreases. So you see that if the x's go up, the y's go down. If the y's go up, the x's go down. But in addition to that, the product of x and y is constant. So if I multiply my x-coordinate times my y-coordinate, I'm always going to get the same number in inverse variation. That number is called the constant of variation. So it's the, the number you get when you multiply x and y together. Um, we sometimes use a k to stand for constants. So x times y would be a constant. And the way we write the function then would be we divide both sides of that expression by x, that equation by x, and we get y equals k divided by x. And so that would be the, the most basic type of rational function because it's a fraction and there's an x in the denominator. So we're going to look at an example and we're going to ask ourselves, does this table represent an inverse variation? And if it does, what is the constant of variation and what is the equation? So what I notice is that as my x's go up, my y-coordinates are going down. So that's a good sign for inverse variation. And then the way I'm going to test is I'm going to multiply x times y. So 1 times 12, I get 12. 2 times 6, I get 12. 3 times 4, I get 12. And then I notice that these are just the same products in the other order. 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 times 1 is 12. So yes, this is inverse variation. And the constant of variation is 12. So the equation is x times y equals 12. Or if we solve that for y, it'd be y equals 12 divided by x. So this is the equation for this inverse variation. Um, here are a couple for you to try. I'll give you a minute. You might want a calculator, especially for that second one with decimals in it. But go ahead and check to see if they are inverse variation. And if they are, figure out what the constant and the equation are. Um, pause the video, and then when you return, we'll go through these answers. These are my answers to these questions. The first one is not inverse variation. It looked like it at first because as x's went up, y's went down. But when I did a little test of multiplying my x-coordinates times my y-coordinates, I was getting a different product. So that's not inverse variation. The second one, even though it looks kind of crazy because of the decimals, it turns out all of those products are 25.5. So yes, it is inverse variation. The constant of variation is 25.5, and the equation is y equals 25.5 divided by x. Um, so at this point, I hope you can use inverse variation to write an equation by looking at that constant of variation. Here's an example. Um, you can try this one if you want, but I'll also walk through this example and then there's a try it after this one. So in an inv inverse variation, x equals 10 and y equals 3, write an equation to represent the inverse variation. So remember, x times y equals k. So for us, 10 times 3 equals 30, so that means x times y equals 30, and so my equation is going to be y equals 30 divided by x. And so if I put negative 6 in for x, I get y equals 30 divided by negative 6, so y would equal negative 5. Here's my equation for the inverse variation, and here is the value of y when x is equal to negative 6. Here's one for you to try. I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and give it a try, and then when you return, the answer will be there. So go ahead and pause now. So for this example, um, x times y, it would give you 3 because 6 times 1 half is 3. That means that my equation for this inverse variation is y equals 3 divided by x. And so then if I plug in x equals 15, 
I get 3 over 15, which reduces to y equals 1 fifth if I divide both of those numbers by 3. So this is the second question. All right, so some things in the real world do um, follow inverse variation. On a guitar, the length of the string S varies inversely with the frequency of the vibrations. The frequency of a 26-inch E string is 326.63 cycles per second. What is the frequency when the string is 13 inches long? So if we're going to write our equation, we would start with finding the constant of variation. So we do 26 times 326.63. Definitely grab a calculator for that. Oops, I wrote that as y equals, that's k equals, sorry. So the constant of variation is equal to those two multiplied together. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply those. So it would be 8,492.38. And so that means my equation is going to be y equals 8,492.38 divided by x. And so if I put 13 into that equation, I will get the frequency when the string is 13 inches long. So I'm going to divide by 13 and I get 653.26 and it was cycles per second. And then the last one, this is one for you to try. So again, um, read through the question and pause the video so you can try it. The amount of time it takes for an ice cube to melt varies inversely with the air temperature. At 20 degrees Celsius, the ice will melt in 20 minutes. How long will it take to melt when the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius? Go ahead and try it and pause the video and then return. when you return, we'll talk through this one. Okay, this one, um, it takes 20 minutes when the, it's 20 degrees, so 20 times 20 would be K. Um, K is 400, so our equation is Y equals 400 divided by X. And then um, when the temperature is 30 degrees, we're going to plug in 30 for X, and it takes 13 and a third minutes for the ice cube to melt. All right, so the last objective is I can use inverse variation to write and evaluate equations, and you should be able to do that after this lesson. Thank you so much. Bye.